I got an early start with respect to horses. When I was 11 I started working on the racetrack as a hot walker with the horses that were in my father's stable at the time. Here I am at 14 ready to leap into action as a groom which for me had been quite a level of achievement at the time. Indeed I guess my formative years with those ponies led to my later career which also involved making a living riding a horse and during that time in the Rocky Mountains I started to discover how hard it was to saddle a riding horse and pack the pack horses when they were being swarmed by mosquitoes and horse flies. So later when we went on to become a business with specializing in non-deed repellents, naturally I ended up formulating something that would be suitable to calm a horse down when the owners are wanting to work with them. We came up with a spray that would last for a few hours but was much more friendly to human skin who are touching the horses and indeed to the horses themselves than the insecticides that are pretty harsh that are sold to be wiped onto horse hide. And that's what we're going to discuss here is how to come up with something that is stronger than human skin can take but quite acceptable to horses and not so bad when you have secondhand exposure to it as a human. If you are planning to make your own equine spray to repel the bugs from your horse while working with it, here is a sample spreadsheet uh, formula which you can use as a worksheet and I will put the link for this sheet down below which is shared in Google Sheets so that you could work with it uh, and substitute or change things around to your liking. And what we'll do here is show a sample batch that would produce one liter and we'll spend the next couple of minutes going through this and if you're not planning to make your own of course you've probably already left this video so this is what's going to occupy our next couple minutes. All these emulsions are a two-part where you have an oil phase and a water phase. And again, the importance of the emulsion is discussed in the previous video. And the reasons we want to achieve an emulsion is the same for animals as it is for humans in that we want to keep our active ingredients which are the essential oils which are these guys <clears throat> we want to keep them from being oxidized and vaporized or evaporated uh, in the environment when they're on the horse in this case now horses have a stronger hide than uh, dogs which uh, canine spray we used to find and that's why we can use uh, essential oils that could be phototoxic or just very harsh on skin such as cinnamic aldehyde is very very hard on human skin but does a great job at repelling insects and this formula that we have tried in the past is limited with respect to its efficacy for the dreaded horse flies and if you are in the fall when the horse flies are really prevalent you may have to do reapplications a lot longer or with more frequency than you would have had to do otherwise for something like ticks or mosquitoes uh, for example maybe 20 minutes reapplication for horse flies two hours otherwise 
<coughs> so you start out with the um, two buckets. You've got one for A and one for B and a cordless drill or a hammer drill that's corded that has a paint mixing blade on it that you can achieve around 2500 RPMs with and you're going to use that for mixing both these phases together. So you start by uh, taking your Lavio menthol crystals and mixing them in with glycerin and this glycerin is not set in stone. You can adjust this as you please and um, if you're looking for a more robust formula you can also substitute something like dipropylene glycol in there. So <coughs> you do that. You put it in the microwave and warm it up uh, and then stir it with a chopstick until all your menthol crystals are dissolved in the glycerin and once they are dissolved in there then you can mix that in with your water. Now you've got your water phase part A completed. You then turn to your oil phase part B and that will involve first of all placing your canola oil out and the canola oil is a carrier oil. You could use any other carrier oil of your choice which could be things like soybean oil, um, you you know uh, any kinds of say standard cooking oils, grapeseed oil and olive oil and those sorts of things might be overkill for animal spray. Moving on then we're going to move and you will be mixing the cinnamic aldehyde, terpenes, geranium, essential oil, citronella and linalu which are the active components in the essential oil like such as citronella essential oil or uh, such as basil essential oil. These are the active ingredients that actually repel the mosquitoes. They typically cost less than the actual essential oils and they work better. So that's why if you can source citronella instead of citronella essential oil, that's the way you would go. Same with the linalu. Uh, with the geranium here, you could also substitute for geranium. It's terpenes, if you can get the terpenes, um, so much the better. They are the active part of an essential oil that does have the effect on the insects and the same um, you could use cinnamon essential oil. Cinnamic aldehyde is the actual active ingredient in the cinnamon oil that repels the bugs. So do what you can. Uh, some people have better access to some of these ingredients than others and then go for there. Uh, you will also need some sort of emulsifying agent here I've just put in an emulsifying agent and that's going to be per the instructions as for the type of agent that you use and uh, the total amount you're going to have to put in there will probably de be dependent on the amount of oil compared to the amount of water in the emulsion and it's going to be the same with fixer. Uh, this amount here I've got would be uh, because for example L-arginine is a powder then instead of milliliters it's grams and you would be 1.5 on L-arginine for example. So the directions are written here down below and uh, I like to use a large glass measuring cup in a microwave and heat it up maybe sometimes for one minute and then stir with a chopstick until all the crystals are dissolved. Um, apparently it's 112 F is the minimum temperature required to melt crystals which I pulled that off of a soap making forum. I'm assuming it may be correct. And then uh, what you do is when you've got all your oil phase blended in a bucket. Uh, I use a stick blender to mix the emulsifying agent in with the oil. So when they're all mixed together 
you can then add your emulsifying agent and put it in under high uh, agitation at again a minimum of 2500 RPM and do that until your emulsifying agent is completely blended into your oil phase and you can't see it anymore. For example if it's a powder such as polymers then keep it going until the polymers have all disappeared. Then um, you add the oil phase into the water phase. You put the water phase under agitation to start with at 2500 RPM then slowly mix in your oil phase until it's all mixed in and then do that for 20 minutes then after 20 minutes here I'm uh, my fixer that I mentioned in here is the uh, arginine uh, it could be some other kind of pH fixing agent and uh, you'll notice as soon as you hit your bucket with it it will thicken from being uh, something like a consistency of milk to the consistency of a milkshake and uh, that's what you'll see as soon as you add your fixer which changes the pH of the emulsion. That's the basics of how you put together your own DIY formula. Again in here though you can mix and match if you want to use something that is also known to be a very strong agent for repelling insects for example uh, cedar products uh, there's all sorts of things that you'll see listed on various sites that have the ability to repel insects and many of those are off limits for human skin but now they are available if you're just going to be putting this on the hide of some equine livestock such as your uh, horses, donkeys, mules, perhaps llamas, alpacas, uh, any of these sorts of things also worth noting and maybe I'll do this in a follow-up these concentrations for example cinnamic aldehyde are stronger and this would not be a suitable amount of cinnamic aldehyde for canine use I have with uh, research we had done and when we had canine spray on the market we did get reports uh, they were very few but the odd time uh, a dog would display an allergic reaction to higher amounts of some of the harsher uh, essential oils such as the cinnamic aldehyde. So keep this in mind, this formula may be a suitable sample for equine. I would not recommend it for canine. We'll probably go into something for that at a later video. For your convenience I've put together a slide that lists some of the possible ingredients that you could consider for inclusion into your formula that may be dependent on how easily it would be for you to access them and source some of them so in no particular order the list goes through them and then in brackets it lists the active ingredient in that oil which actually is the functioning part that repels the insects so in other words if you have something whose main ingredient at repelling is uh, the linolu then you can see down here that the lavender also has that as the main ingredient as well as basil or thyme and in fact you can buy linalu standalone in drums uh, should you be engaged in making large quantities of this so that's some of the things that you could consider and um, 
some of the better ones of course stand out such as catnip which is expensive that we still use in our formulations vetiver which is also quite expensive and nucatone from natural sources even more so at something like four thousand dollars a liter however there is a company that's been given rights through the CDC by their patent in order to make a synthetic nucatome using a fermentation process and uh, although I've tried to contact them they're not very forthcoming with sharing information or getting back to you so far I've had one response from them and uh, they never got back to me again with my further questions they basically said who are you? Uh, and I think when they determined I wasn't someone that was going to spend a million dollars, I think they quickly lost interest in me. The company is called Evolva. And I'll probably show that in the notes. Geranium oil is uh, also available, and it's the active ingredient in geranium. Um, and citronella, a lot of people know that name very well. Uh, what they probably don't know is it's citronella all which is a terpene out of the citronella which is the ingredient which is responsible for repelling the mosquitoes. Now another thing worthy of noting as you go through this list and you can do your own due diligence and look any of these up and you'll get lots of information on them through uh, a Google search but the thing that you should watch for and keep in mind is the reason you don't see quite a few of these in formulations that are intended for human skin is they either have uh, they're photosensitive so they have uh, phototoxic effects which can give you a pretty severe sunburn after you have been out in the sun for not very long at all so for those sorts of things where you might be able to use it on horse hide or on the fur part of uh, a dog but not on their uh, belly where they have skin you have to keep that in mind and then also some of them are just skin irritants in all but very small amounts so uh, give you an example when I tested the cinnamic aldehyde or uh, cinnamon essential oil besides going around smelling like a cinnamon bun especially if you use it with vanillin um, it really does cause skin sensitivity at anything much more than about 0 0.02 percent of the overriding formula so that's another example although it's in the spreadsheet I have because it's there I haven't put it on this list but you would not be able to use it on yourself but it might be very suitable for the horse in concentrations up to say five percent those are all things that you need to keep in mind with respect and that's why for example in a lot of popular natural formulations you may not see many of these and uh, that would be the reason why and if you do and your research shows that they either are phototoxic or uh, cause skin uh, dermatitis reactions then maybe you need to be a little bit skeptical about that formulation <laughs> This is Ron Tessellini. Um, 
Mr. Deslini, would you like to explain what you're doing right now? God only knows. <laughs> trying to have a shower. We're taking water from Bryant Creek. We've never done this before. Larry Gilmore. Over 60 years of combined experience between these two gentlemen, and they've never done it before. 